Hello, welcome to Nursing with Professor B. My name is Bridget. I have a master's degree in nursing education. I'm also a family nurse practitioner. In today's video, I will be going over medical abbreviations, the letter C. A few of you have requested that I continue the series. I had done um, medical abbreviations A, B, and now I'm to the letter C. If you have any recommendations for videos, make sure that you drop a comment below. All right, without further ado, make sure you hit the like button and make sure that you subscribe and make sure you turn on that notification bell. medical abbreviations the letter c this letter here the c with the line on top of it it means with so for example if you see something written that says mri with contrast so that is with c with that line above it if you speak spanish you can think of it as con con means with in spanish so c a cancer Unfortunately, cancer is a very hard diagnosis. It's a lot of lives are lost due to cancer. So it's a very tough thing to be diagnosed with. So when I first went to nursing school and someone mentioned a cabbage, I was like, hmm, what is, what is a cabbage? I had no idea. So a cabbage is a coronary artery bypass graft. And what happens is when someone has had a heart attack, there's basically a blockage. The blood cannot get through. So the area below the blockage dies there's an infarct right dead tissue so we need to bypass the area with the blockage in order to perfuse that area of the heart with more blood so if the blockage is here here they took the saphenous vein uh, and they put it they bypassed it almost like building this is a back road and they almost built like a highway to bypass that area so they can use the saphenous vein from the leg or they can use the internal mammary artery. CAD is coronary artery disease, and coronary artery disease is when plaque starts to build up. So normal artery, beginning of plaque formation, fatty deposit, accumulation, until finally it narrows so much that blood can't get through, and then the blood clots, and there's a typo here. Um, I got these out of uh, Shutterstock. Here's an example of an, a blockage where blood can no longer get through. You see how narrow it is there? A CAT scan is computed axial tomography. They also call it a CT scan. Nursing school is hard enough, but there are multiple ways to say the same thing, if that makes sense. And then a cath stands for a catheter or catheterization. This is what we call a Foley catheter where it goes in the bladder, but you can also have cardiac catheterization and they can go in through the radial or the femoral artery. And basically what happens is they see that there is an area that has narrowed. They go in there with a catheter and they try to open that area up. And sometimes they have to stent the area so that it doesn't close back up. A CBC stands for complete blood count. And what you would see normally in a CBC is this here, like uh, white blood cells, neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, basophils. We have the red blood cells, hemoglobin, hematocrit, mean corpuscular volume, mean corpuscular hemoglobin, mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration, the red blood cell distribution with platelets, and mean platelet volume. Continuous bladder irrigation. Here's a little picture of what's going on. And this, can, this is used a lot of times. It can help prevent urinary tract obstruction, and it works by flushing out small blood clots that form after prostate or bladder surgery. And it may also be used to treat an irritated, inflamed, or infected bladder lining. And with CBI, there's a three-way catheter. So you see the catheter here that allows irrigation solution to flow into the bladder through one lumen and flow out through another. And the third lumen is used to inflate the balloon that holds the catheter in place. Port for inflation of catheter balloon right here, tubing from the bladder, tubing, tubing to irrigate it, and the tubing that goes inside the bladder. CBR, complete bed rest. CC is what we use as chief complaint. Um, I know some nursing schools are getting away from saying chief complaint and they're saying patient presents with. We don't mean it when we say like chief complaint in a negative way. It's just what's their main concern? Like what is their issue for coming in today? So patient presents with 
uh, the CC would be, is it shortness of breath or is it leg pain? Is it nausea? Is it diarrhea? Is it vomiting? So when you see CC, that means that's their chief complaint. That's the main thing that they're coming in to be seen for. The CDC stands for Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. C. diff stands for Clostridium difficile. They recently changed the name of this. So I was listening to a chat that recently Clostridium difficile had been renamed, but the abbreviation is still the same. They just changed uh, like the ending of Clostrid Clostridium. But you'll probably still see this in the hospital because it takes a while for people to adopt changes in healthcare. For example, CC should no longer be used, but people still say, oh, get me three CCs of this when it now what should be said is uh, milliliters. CF stands for cystic fibrosis. And um, leave a comment below if there's a specific like diagnosis that you really want me to go over. Let me know and I will do that for you. But, but if I were to go in depth with each abbreviation, this video would turn into an hour long. And I don't think you have an hour to watch. <laughs> Cor this CHD could stand for coronary heart disease or congenital heart disease. And this is why it's very careful when you use abbreviations. Um, you don't want to abbreviate everything because it's dangerous. People could misinterpret what you meant. That being said, if you're on a pediatric floor when someone is using CHD or let's say neonatal floor, then perhaps they are more likely referring to congenital heart disease because you're dealing with babies. Tetralogy of Fallot is one of those congenital heart disease conditions where children are born with four heart defects. So always ask if you're not sure, what did you mean? Did you mean coronary heart disease or did you mean congenital heart disease? Congestive heart failure. Now this is another term that is archaic. It should be, now we should be dropping the C and just saying heart failure. But again, you're still going to see CHF used a lot. In diastolic heart failure, the heart can't fill. You have st stiff and thick chambers. Systolic heart failure, there are stretched and thin chambers here. You see the ventricles, the muscle, how overstretched it is. The heart can't pump in systolic and the heart can't fill in diastolic. CMV is cytomegalovirus. And CMV is a common virus in the same family as the herpes virus. It can infect anyone. And CMV spreads by direct contact by body fluids, saliva, blood, urine, semen, vaginal fluids, congenital infection, breast milk, etc. Most healthy people don't experience any symptoms when infected with CMV. A majority of adults have antibodies consistent with past infection. When symptoms do occur, they are very similar to the symptoms of mononucleosis, which is fatigue, low-grade fever, chills and or sweats, muscle aches, decreased appetite, and enlarged lymph nodes. It's very important to note that antibiotics do not work for viruses. So if you go to your healthcare provider and they tell you you have a virus, don't get mad at them because they don't give you antibiotics. They are actually doing what they're supposed to be doing. CNS stands for central nervous system and the central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord. CO is complains of, so just how CC was chief complaint, CO is complains of, complains of chest pain, complains of, you know, whatever it is that they're presenting with. And then we have CO here is carbon monoxide, or it could be also be cardiac output. So again, always ask. CVA is cerebrovascular accident or stroke. There's two types of stroke. You can have ischemic or hemorrhagic. In ischemic, there's a clot, and then the area does not get oxygen. So there's anoxia. And then hemorrhagic, there's a rupture of the vessel. So blood spews out, and then you have a hemorrhage. It's very important to determine what kind of stroke it is because the treatment varies significantly. And if you treat a hemorrhagic stroke as an ischemic stroke, you would kill them because you would give them what we call clot busters, TPA, and then that would make them bleed out even more. So always important to differentiate between what kind of stroke someone is having. More, the ischemic is definitely the most common type of stroke. About 80% of strokes are ischemic 
CVP is central venous pressure, and central venous pressure is considered a direct measurement of the blood pressure in the right atrium and vena cava. So here we have this that loops in here and is going to be going into the right atrium. CVS is cardiovascular system. Chest x-ray is, this is a chest x-ray. Of course, the chest x-ray would not have all of these little markings. Thank you so much for watching. If you want a copy of this PowerPoint, check out the instructions below. Right now, it will probably be my email, but in the future, it will probably be a website where it will automatically be um, sent to you once you provide your email. But for now, just check the instructions below because they may change in the future. So. Mm -hmm.